It was a really interesting meeting. There were lots of, lots of different NGOs turned up, which was really good to see. And the mines department were engaging remarkably well <laughs> compared to what we've had earlier. And the news was not much at the time. So the meeting itself was go away, write questions, we'll answer them if we can. And we went away reassured that we'd been heard and reassured that the Department of Energy and Mining was taking everything seriously but not particularly sure that anything would come of it. So the next day after that the direction was issued to the miner to remove the brine from the ponds and, um, and that was a huge relief because clearly the head of uh, brine is what's driving the whole problem. So reducing the head is a good thing. The things that make us most nervous at the moment are that this process has taken so long till now that we may have lost the window of opportunity to actually successfully remove the brine from the ponds. Because as far back as St Kilda we have salt crystallising out in those gypsum ponds and that's never happened before. So that's um, the brine in there is probably 100 to 140 grams saltier than the brine in those ponds ever was. And it's so salty that when the pumps run, it's likely to salt up the pumps and that could lead to things like broken shafts, which would delay the process of getting the brine out. Lots of people pump hypersaline brine, <laughs> so there's ways that you can do it. Um, but whether that will occur in time to actually remove as much brine as possible and not leave a very thick deposit of salt behind is another matter. We've already got at least a centimetre of salt in the bottom of those ponds. That means that even when those ponds are drained out, next winter when it rains on them, they will re-dissolve that salt and we'll have another slug of sodium rich brine going into the salt marshes. At the moment they've just been told to remove the head out of the ponds. To do that they will have to move it forward to Dry Creek. They will use two pipelines that are currently in existence. One goes underneath the Little Para River and one goes across the Dry Creek drain. So both of those pipelines are currently in place. So they can actually move the brine into a series of holding ponds called the Final Areas which are south of Dry Creek. They don't have permission to make commercial salt. So that as far as I'm aware, I would interpret that to mean that they won't be putting that into the crystallizers. It'll just be going into the holding ponds. In the long term, whether or not you can use the gypsum ponds at all in salt production is debatable. They were always going to be high risk. There's a massive deposit of gypsum in the ponds. The underneath anaerobic layers have had sulphide reduction occurring for many years so the potential to produce acid is massive. They were built in the 1930s and you know they're old ponds that the banks aren't plastic lined as the ones are further north there's no seepage drains around them. Trying to reuse them in any form is going to be risky. Ideally the government would have gotten the brine out of those ponds three months ago. Publicly on the website the Department of Mines claims that they're investigating. So I don't know that, that the government has yet said publicly that it's the head of brine in the ponds that's causing the problem. The, the brine in those ponds that's making salt now here at St Kilda, that doesn't happen just with a couple of weeks of not pumping. Normally it would the brine at St Kilda would take six months to get to the crystallizers and would arrive just in time to start crystallising. So it's about a six month process to go from normal salinity for St Kilda to crystallisation point of salt. Which means that even three months ago when this impacts on the mangroves were obvious, the brine in the ponds was saltier than it should have been in that area. And now the time has run out, now it's crystallising. And that's, that's the issue is that we're behind the eight ball all the time. We're not moving fast enough. There's issues, we can see them coming. We need not to mess around worrying about getting the fine details 
of, of cause and effect. We need to manage these before they arrive, these impacts. And, and that's the issue. And that's what I'm most concerned about is that the continued leisurely pace of government process is going to end up causing more and more issues because now the snowball that was rolling towards us is turning into an avalanche. So we've got ponds to the north starting to get close to the precipitation point of salt and the ponds to the south maybe become so salty we can't pump the water through uh, and these are kind of ongoing issues that just get bigger and bigger and and harder and harder to deal with so the the aim is to move quickly to take brine out of ponds that can't be reasonably reused without high risk and then to ensure that anything that's done in the northern area is sustainable the holding pattern that worked for the past five years was a temporary affair it was always meant to be temporary a permanent solution was needed and the government needs to make decisions now about what that permanent solution looks like as the head um, in the ponds is dropping whether it's by removal of brine by the mine ore or by evaporation or by leaking the nearest salt marsh ponds which were permanently wet um, for the last three months are starting to dry out a bit at low tide so there's clearly not as much brine coming out at the moment and that's possibly also because there's salt depositing across the surface of the the gypsum in there which will make while there's hypersaline brine in there will make a temporary seal in the pond but of course that will only last until such time as it rains Right now I think that DEM needs to be ready to assist the miner to work through the issues of getting the brine out of those ponds. If they don't do that immediately then it's going to become harder and harder and very soon the miner will arrive at the point where the direction has the out clause which says um, remove as much brine as is reasonably believe practical. You know, there, there comes a point when they can't, when their machinery breaks down, when they can't get the brine to go through pipes because it's crystallising on the sides of the pipe as it reaches the cold water that's around the outside of them. And <laughs> all of that kind of stuff is going to happen. And, and we don't have very much time left before we're at that point. There, and there could be ways to prevent that from happening and the mines department needs to stand ready to assist the miner in managing those issues. I think that besides keeping the government aware of the fact that this is really important and that people of South Australia care about it, I think that there are plenty of organisations like the Estuary Care Foundation and TNC and your local NRM who are going to be looking very quickly at what restoration we can put in both at the Little Para Estuary where the rushlands are dead and along the salt marshes and the mangroves where we need extra propagules. Uh, next summer is going to be a big time to collect propagules. We've missed the opportunity this year for that. Providing the salinity in the ponds, the salt marsh ponds, gets washed away in the next few weeks, small remnants of salt marsh may still be holding on and may be able to run out and cover some of that. So there's there's grounds for optimism and people will be able to be involved in replanting at the estuary and and in um, propagule hunts and collection to improve the, the mangroves quite a lot. But for now, the important thing to do is to make sure that the government's aware that people care and that they really, really do not wish to see any further loss of habitat as a result of the mismanagement of this area.